It's a new day, family, and today we'll be diving through the entire history of Raft Survival. 2016, a jam-packed year of worldwide events. Brazil impeached their president. Billion dollar corruption scandal. Rio hosts the Olympics. And Britain votes to leave the European Union. But above all, in the fall of 2016 at Uppsala University, three students were given the task of creating a game prototype. And they decided to venture into the survival sandbox genre. And that's when the idea of an infinite ocean survival game was first discussed. These three students, Andre Bengston, Samir Pal Alian and Ellen Meleka decided to put together their complementary skill sets and begin production on this awesome idea. And on the 13th of October 2016, the first official dev blog was posted with the name First Week of Production. It described their vision for the game and what they had in mind for it, as well as their clear plans to update their blog each week to keep followers of the game up to date. They ended this first dev blog with the words, This Monday we plan to send out a prototype that anyone can test and give feedback on. As promised, a week later on 17th of October, their second dev blog landed, named the quote, first testable prototype, unquote. With this dev blog, they stated that the name of the game was currently called Raft, but it's a work in progress name and it's likely to change. They once again added a general description of the game and its features and included a link to the first ever Raft prototype, which is sadly no longer available today. A Google form was also included in this blog, which asked for general feedback regarding their first prototype. And by this point, it is pretty clear to see they're realizing Raft's real potential as a survival game. In this same dev blog, the first ever public image of Raft was released and it shows the bare bones mechanics of the game, as well as a throw force mechanic which is actually in the game still, it's just not visible as a bar anymore. And less than three days later, the official second dev blog was released on that same blog, outlining some of the new features that were added into the game that week, all of which can still be seen in a similar form today. It was clear that the development was picking up speed by this point because updates were coming fast and at the end of this dev blog they stated that their current goal was to create sort of like a loop in the game where the player would just have to keep purifying salt to quench their thirst. Does that sound familiar? Just after this the second image of Raft was released and by this time people were beginning to download and play the first prototype of Raft and of course with the game being as good and as unique as it is it wasn't long before friends started telling each other and news of the game hit YouTube. Hello folks, we're back in Raft for our second video on this wonderful survival game prototype. In the third official blog, loads of new items were added which would completely change the game and make it feel much more whole. The fishing mechanic, the purifying water, the basic hunger and thirst system we still see today, and loads of new craftable items. Throughout November, three more dev blogs were released discussing small additions and changes, but December of 2016 is where Raft really began to pick up steam. And this started with the announcement of a new upcoming public prototype. They stated that this prototype can be expected to release late next week. Which which would be roughly the middle of December. And by this time, the developers also began creating different social channels for Raft, starting with a Facebook page and then a Twitter account and even an Instagram account. On the 16th of December 2016, the new prototype was released and straight away the game blew up on YouTube. Andre Bengston, one of the co-founders and artists for Raft, posted the prototype trailer to his personal YouTube channel. And within days, it hit hundreds of thousands of views and is currently sitting on over 600,000 views. On the 23rd of December, the developers broke their small silence by thanking everyone for playing their game and downloading it. And they announced over 100,000 people had downloaded the game and for what started as a small uni project was beginning to become a real phenomenon. But little did they know that the best was yet to come by a long way. With the release of the second public prototype, smaller YouTubers like Spammels, Official Stuff Plus and even Splattercat Gaming began releasing videos on the prototype. But it wasn't until early 2000 2017 when massive YouTubers discovered the game and released videos on it. And of course, all of their viewers followed suit by downloading and playing the game. First, Jacksepticeye, and then Jelly, followed by Markiplier, and even Yogscast. And it was all going crazy. By February of 2017, Google search numbers for Raft tripled. But of course, with any new game comes loads of bugs, and Raft was no different. Thankfully, there weren't any game-breaking bugs that completely ruined the experience, as the developers have clearly been very good at releasing 
releasing very high quality releases straight from the beginning. And a couple weeks went by and it was time for the developers to get some proper customer opinions and to get to know their audience. They released a Google form which is actually still available to this day. And most of the questions aim to find out more about the person playing their game and how they actually discovered Raft. Remember, by this time, Raft was only available on one platform, itch.io, and was yet to hit Steam by a long way. In this same dev blog, version 1.05 was made public, and it included loads of new basic features that we take for granted today. The beautiful day and night cycle, the new water rendering, new furniture like chairs, tables, and even lanterns, the infamous beetroot plant, nails, the options menu, and even item rotation, which is still one of the best features in Raft today. However, in February of 2017, the development team went a bit quiet and questions as well as doubts started to rise very quickly from within the community on whether development is still continuing and what the team are working on next. But the development team were very quick to put a stop to this in their 9th of February dev blog, which reassured the community that they were nowhere near finished with this project and were continuing their work on making this game as good as possible. It took until the end of March though for the community to get any further updates, but it was a big one. The players were finally given a concept for their first possible character to be added to the game. And April was due to be big, and oh boy it was. Devblog 9 was released on April 14th, and it was in this devblog that they finally announced that they're going to be giving Steam a go, and seeing whether they can release their game for download on there. Along with this awesome announcement, buoyancy was added to create realism, and even coral reefs were added for the first ever time, and this is where Raft really began to come together and become the game it is today. All throughout 2017, the developers kept the community entertained with the occasional dev blog, and by the 5th of September, it was time for their next big announcement. Raft was officially coming to Steam, and they stated that they planned to release an early access version of Raft to Steam in 2018. This is also where their partnership with Axolot first began. Axolot agreed to publish their games for them and to try and make their vision for Raft into a reality. But the game updates didn't stop there, oh no. By the end of September, islands began to get added into the game, as well as some awesome new models, plenty of which are still seen in the game today. Each month, the game received new updates, including both vital and quality of life updates. Building was improved, the abandoned raft model was changed, signs were added, flowers added, tons of things that make the game as diverse as it is today. And on 16th of May 2018, the hype officially began building for Raft's Steam release. This was a very big moment for Raft and the whole developer team, and it's in this exact dev blog where loads of famous images came to light, many of which I bet some of you recognise. The 23rd of May 2018 was possibly the most important day in Raft's lifetime, their official Steam release. With the trailer picking up Steam on YouTube and hundreds of creators getting ready to play the game on Steam and release their videos to all of their subscribers, it was ready and bound to blow up. The next dev blog, they were no longer being released on the Raft blog and were instead being pushed straight to Steam as updates. Merely days after the game hit Steam, there was an update that followed, which included the ladder and a few bug fixes which were also found on release. The second update though was where there were loads of bug fixes and it's clear by this time that Raft was no ordinary game and these developers were not only dedicated, but they were perfectionists. Late 2018 was a really notable point in Raft's history. Loads of new islands were added, more combat methods and weapons were added like the bow, the shark was balanced to provide a better quality of life, and as for building, loads of new blocks were added to add variety to the game. But in my opinion, the best thing about 2018 was the interaction between the development team and the community. There were surveys released countless times, almost every single dev blog, and this is something I wish they did more of nowadays, and I'm sure in future they will when they're not as busy. Although Raft started out very very strong, it was only averaging around 2,000 players concurrently at this time, and development was starting to slow, which meant less YouTube videos were released. But it wasn't long until a massive update hit the community with Storm. On the 7th of February, the quote domesticated update unquote dropped, giving the players loads more to do in game. Animals were added, the net catcher was added, grass plots, dirt digging with shovels, the scary warthog, which is obviously on the caravan islands and 
on those big islands, brand new armor and snorkels for the player and even the healing salve, all of which are still very important to this day. Through 2019 though, it was mostly just updates and dev blogs and honestly the development team were quite quiet. You know what this means with Redbeat, the community were very much in the quiet before the storm phase as we are actually also in right now I guess. But their silence was broken in insane fashion by announcing on the 3rd of December 2019 that Raft would be receiving a story mode for the players to follow. Chapter 1 was officially released to the public and this would create a whole new aspect to Raft and would attract an entirely new audience of story mode players. Some of the new destinations obviously being the reworked tower, Balboa Island, 10 new small islands, 11 new achievements, plantable trees, tens of new items including the infamous machete and also even the notebook which provides the backbone for the entire storyline. Engines and steering wheels were also added which really added some modern innovation to the game, all of which were very well received by the public as the concurrent player count for Raft began picking up again. In late December it was once again at its heights, averaging 18,000 players at the same time and revenue was at an all time high. Immediately after this the development team took this information and began work on chapter 2. But not before releasing the smaller beehive update on February 14th or 2020. This added beekeeping and the bee island to the game which gives the player a lot more to do but what the community really wanted was the chapter 2 update and they knew it was coming they just had to wait. Teasers were a weekly thing and by this time of course the official Raft discord was thriving with the community constantly discussing the next update and all of the leaks and teasers. 236 days later and what all the community were waiting for had finally dropped officially onto Steam. Raft Chapter 2. It was here and it was beautiful. Raft grew to player counts never seen before. Over 41,000 people were seen playing the game at once and of course it blew up immensely over YouTube with almost every YouTuber and their subscribers begging for them to play it and create a series on it. So many people were once again seen playing the game and enjoying all of the new insane locations and features. Zip lines, new pigs, caravan town, the abandoned city of Tangaroa and so much more mystery was added in chapter 2. It was the biggest update today and the users were beginning to return to try out the game once again. Hotfixes followed soon after the update to fix little bugs and there were monthly dev blogs which basically just outlined small bug fixes, community events and teasers up until roughly March of 2021. Everything was going fine and then suddenly the development team became quite quiet again. No dev blog for the month of March? And people were already impatient for the chapter 3 update and questions were starting to rise on whether Raft was maybe in development hell. Were the developers tired from working inside COVID, worn out or uninspired? Well, June proved otherwise. What we didn't know about chapter 3 and its development was the fact that the developer team were actually hard at work designing and planning to add tons of new furniture and general decoration to the game in order to make rafts much more customizable. This update, the renovation update, was quite a shock to most people since chapter 3 was fully expected to be the next update but it wasn't and people were worried that development hadn't started for chapter 3 but the team were quick to squash these rumours and they confirmed that the renovation update was initially planned to be a part of the chapter 3 update but was later split into its own update since there was so much stuff in it. Along with the new furniture, brand new sea life was also added and this was something Raft had needed since the very beginning. Some more diversity in the ocean, you know, whales, dolphins, jellyfish, stingrays and even flocks of birds were added to provide the user with unique experiences when playing Raft. But after the renovation update, things quickly started to slow down again and the development team had their annual summer break and ever since then things have been very quiet to say the least. But not for long because on the 24th of August 2021, the day that I'm recording this video, Andre Bengston, one of the developers for Raft, has taken to the announcement channel in the Discord and provided us all with this amazing teaser and an announcement as to how the development is going on. The development team have just returned from their vacation. I don't know whether it's true that they just returned or they've been back for a few days, but it's very likely that that is the reason for the quietness over the past few weeks. But now we can really start getting excited, guys, because chapter three is really just around the corner. The image attached to this teaser seems to be something from chapter three because I don't recognize it. And to me, it looks like a nuclear power plant. So what could that mean? If there's factories, maybe that means automation, guys. And you know, we've discussed that a whole ton. Not much can be said about chapter three or any further in the future for Raft. And that brings us to present day. Waiting for this imminent chapter three update to finally drop onto Steam and to no doubt amaze us all. I do believe Raft has a very bright future and I don't see it going away anytime soon. However, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, drop it a like and remember to subscribe. I'm almost at 1k and it
it'd help me so much. We're on the final home stretch. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I will see you next time.